You're listening to A Slice of Therapy with me, Alan Parry. There's a common tendency in terms of emotional well-being, mental health, call it what you will, to think of one's problem as a symptom. Now, symptom is a very medical word. A symptom is typically something that one would talk about with regards to our physical health. A doctor might say, well, what are the symptoms? And I might say, well, I've got a cough and I've got a fever or whatever I might happen to say. And so it's a kind of a medicalization of our well-being, of our emotional well-being to start talking in terms of symptoms. And in this episode, I want to explain three reasons why I never view it as a symptom. And I want to explain why that is. The first is that I see it as a defence, a protective thing. Secondly, I believe that whatever this symptom as it's called is, actually makes sense. Even if it might seem irrational, my view is that it makes sense and I work from that point of view. And the third reason why I never view it as a symptom is because when you look at something as a symptom, you try and treat the symptom. And What I'll explain in this episode is that that tends to ensure that we are looking at completely the wrong thing. So let's look at three ways then. The first one is to think of the symptom, as it's often medically known, as instead a protective defence. Now, one of the examples I've given on a previous podcast episode, which I'll use again now, is to imagine that you grew up in a police state. Imagine that you were raised in a country that was a harsh dictatorship. And one of the things that they prohibited in this harsh dictatorship was laughing. And so any time that anybody in that society laughs, the secret police would suddenly swoop on them. And take them away. And punish them really harshly. Now, if you then move to another country somehow. And you're an adult. The likelihood is that you will never laugh. Because you've been programmed through all those years. That if you laugh, there's going to be some really terrible consequences. And so in that context, it would actually be crazy to go around laughing. Can you imagine living under a dictatorship where you knew full well and had witnessed full well people laughing, being dragged off, kicking and screaming by the secret police? If you were to go around openly laughing, that would be the crazy thing to do. And so here you are in a completely different context, a completely different country, where laughter isn't prohibited, and yet your nervous system kind of feels a sense of danger whenever you start to feel a chuckle coming on. And so just instinctively, instinctively you would stifle it. Now that's a good example of where the thing that you might want to change isn't actually a symptom, but it's a defence. That on some level... We're doing this thing that we might want to get rid of. Because to do the opposite would actually bring some sort of bad consequences. And so that leads to the second reason why this isn't a symptom. And that is because it makes sense. Now, in the example that I've just given there. It makes sense that you don't laugh. It makes sense that you didn't laugh while you were growing up in that police state. And it makes sense that even now you tend not to laugh 
that you tend to stifle your laughs because that's how you're programmed, that's how you're raised, that's how your nervous system is responding. And so even though it's safe now, it still kind of makes sense because there'll be some belief in there that says, if I laugh, I'm going to be dragged off by the secret police to God knows what. Now, it may not be true anymore, but still, it makes sense. And so it's a real challenge, you see. When you, when you use the term symptom, you kind of pathologize it. You, you imply that this is something that doesn't make sense. You imply that this is some sort of maladaptive response. You, you'll imply that this is something that's kind of crazy. But it isn't. It makes sense. And that's the case with everybody I see, really. Whatever's going on actually makes sense. And so if you view it from that standpoint, that it makes sense, then it allows you to explore why it makes sense. And once you explore why it makes sense, it allows you to get to the third point. And the third point is that you actually start looking at the right thing. Now, the problem with the person who doesn't laugh isn't the lack of laughter. It's the belief that still exists that laughing will cause a bad consequence. And so if all you ever tried to do was try to get the person to laugh, you know, show them Marx Brothers films or take them to a comedy show or tickle them with a feather, you're not really going to achieve change because... The lack of laughter isn't really the issue. The lack of laughter is reproduced by something else, by this fear that something bad will happen if they do. And so once we understand that, we can then start looking at that belief system or nervous system response that is actually producing the thing that many people refer to as a symptom, but hopefully I'm persuading you that it's anything but. And once you're able then to look at the right thing, you're much more likely to be able to let that thing change, to allow yourself something different once those bad consequences that are feared are dealt with. And so a lot of kind of therapy, really, where it looks at the problem needs to make sure that it's looking at the correct thing. Of course, some therapy is simply about looking into the future and building something that is close to what you want. But if you find yourself hitting against a barrier, the barrier is likely to be this thing that produces the problem. Now, I say the problem there because it's something you want to get rid of, but it's not the symptom because it's not an irrational thing. It's a protective defence and it makes sense. And once you understand why it makes sense, you can actually work on the thing and make changes that result in this problem just being naturally and effortlessly given up. When you think of it as a symptom, you're always going against the grain. You're always fighting this thing that has a good reason to hold on to the behavior that you don't want to be having anymore. But when you actually work with the reason underlying that, the belief underlying that, it just naturally lets go because it's a protector, because it's a defense, because it makes sense in some way or other. You can actually get to a point where the change becomes effortless, where the person will come back to see me and I'll ask them about the problem and they'll look at me strange and say, well, what problem? And it feels as if that just doesn't apply to them, even though once it did. And I witness this an awful lot in my work. And it's a really enjoyable thing to ask somebody about the thing that they originally came with and to get that puzzled look because effortlessly that thing is no longer there. They no longer have to keep working on it because it's been gone. So let's have a quick recap then. We saw how 
we can often medicalize the things that, that we want to let go of. We call them symptoms, just as we would with physical health. And we looked at three reasons why, in actual fact, that takes us in completely the wrong direction. The first one is that it actually is a protective defence. It's not something that we're doing because we're crazy or irrational, but because it protects us in some way. We saw that the second thing is that it actually makes sense. And so part of our job is together to figure out how it makes sense. And then the third point is that once we're treating it as a symptom and just focusing on the symptom and thinking that that needs to be the thing that needs to be sorted, we're actually missing a lot of the point. Because if it's protective and it makes sense, then there'll be something else that's producing it. It's almost like having a leaky roof, but focusing all your attention on the bucket. And so if you find this useful at all, this kind of reframe to understand that what's going on for you actually makes sense in some way and that working out how it makes sense is a huge step forward to making some sort of change. Then feel free to pass this on so other people can get the benefit. You might even want to work with me one to one. I'm Alan Parry and you can find out more at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co. Dot UK. And don't worry if you're not in Liverpool, by the way, because I work online as well. And finally, feel free to subscribe to the podcast. It's completely free and it means you'll never miss an episode again. So thanks for listening. I'll be back again on the next one.